protect your gym. Rob on my knob, just a J type win. Dark wrong, no sauce, get a mark for my lens. Talk wrong, get marked with a fist to J. Say that I'm never. Yo, chat, we lit. We lit. Just as promised, we got Abstract Genesis in the building. Hold up, turn me up, chat. Turn me up, turn me up. This track right here by Abstract Genesis is called Sick. I'll have a link in the description box below. Let's get back into it. Now chat, the creativity does not just stop there. It is not. It is not. This is why I say he's next up, bro. Hold on. We get into his other track by Abstract Genesis. This is Knives and Chow. Let's get into it. Chad, we lit. We lit. We have none other than Abstract Genesis in the building. All right. We about to get this interview on the way. Go ahead and introduce yourself for your fans and the new people watching you as well. What's up, chat? I'm Abstract Genesis, otherwise known as Genesis Morningstar or Jeremiah. I don't really give out my government like that. <laughs> so I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Feel it. So let's start from the beginning. What, are, what What's your hometown? Where are you from? Um, Austin, Texas is where I mainly reside in, where I grew up at. How was life growing up there in Austin, Texas? Um, I didn't really get out too much. I was always with family a lot, you know, but it's a beautiful place, a beautiful city. There's a lot of small towns surrounding it. It feels like a small slice of Cali, ironically. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm in a committed relationship of a year and a Sorry, month. Sorry, ladies. He's a taken honest man. So you say a year and a month, and so how is that going so far? Um, it's actually pretty good. We have a pretty strong connection. She's the first girl to ever make me make lovey-dovey music, aside from my dark imagery and stuff. I feel it. Women have a way of bringing that out of you. Wouldn't you say, like, that soft side that you didn't even know that you had? Exactly. It's going to be a real shock for my next releases. Hell yeah. I'm looking forward to it. You're very eclectic. Like, for my audience, listen, eclectic means very different. Like, I feel like you can draw from, like, a lot of different sources. Um, who would you say was, like, an influence grow like, coming up into this game? Like, who were you early listening to before you got into music? And when you got into music, like, who's your inspiration? Who do you still listen to? Um... Let's say, as a kid, two people I always listened to were Corey Taylor or Slipknot and Michael Jackson. It's really weird. It's on two opposite ends of the spectrum. But, you know, <laughs> I feel it. Still listen to them, but I do listen to a lot of different 
metalcore, death metal, all of that type of stuff. But I do also listen to rappers such as like, let's say, Juice World, Lil Tecca, obviously X people, the comparisons there, we'll get into that later, I guess, or something. But yeah, I have a really large catalog of different artists that I listen to and different genres I enjoy. Man, I feel it. I feel it. That That's a deep pool to listen to. Me too. That's why I'm walking around with a dread mohawk. <laughs> I listen to a lot of a lot of rock. That's why I gravitated to your sound. I remember when I first discovered you, I was scrolling on TikTok, thinking about my next like hip hop, like little short clip, news clip, and I remember, boom, you were there mosh pitting for a crowd. We might play that a little bit later, and I'm like, God damn, this shit is lit. And at first, I was like, I don't know if I ever want to do interviews, but if I do an interview, I got to interview him. <laughs> like, I was I, like, I was hooked from the energy. And then I did my Googles, looked you up, and I found uh, Creep Freestyle. I'm like, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. I'm sold. He can switch it up. Now... Who would you say was the one or like, was there like a particular reason? Was there a particular artist or just something in your life that made you say, you know what? Yeah, these artists are cool, but I want to come out and do my own thing. Um, a big catalyst for even down to my name and my core was Michael Jackson music wise. It wasn't the reason I started making music, but it's the reason why I decided I want to do so many different genres and stuff because he could take it from pop to R&B to rock, influence music, and, like, really bring everyone together. It's so all part of your goal for that. Facts. And I think the reason I started making music was, like, I used to be a dancer, which a lot of people don't know. Oh, but shit. A musical side I played instruments and stuff like that and whenever I was dancing I noticed I hear music differently than most people and I was like I could really apply myself a different way to this and I just saw it being more of a success story for me if I started making music you know yeah I feel it man like I I hear it like you have the skill you know what I mean a lot of people don't have that once you have that visibility, that link tree, everybody knows exactly where to find you at. It's over. It is game over. I can see you on the front of the double XL uh, freshman cover ASAP. Would you ever do something like that? Um, honestly, I don't think I'd turn it down if I got the opportunity. But my whole thing is, if I get a chance to do something like that, it's not going to be on the industry stuff. It, I'm going to try to change it. Because the yeah. has been declining for a little bit, as a lot of people could tell. And I want to be that Facts. one artist that's like, hey, this reminds me of this. This could, like, bring them back type stuff. You know? Yeah, you, the way, that energy is missed. Like, that head banging, and then you say you're going to start coming out with love music. That artist that could just hit you in multiple different ways. Your style is like the antidote to a Drake. You know what I mean? Like... It's the antidote to something like that for sure. You you could definitely switch it up. Now, uh, how how was school life there? Would you, how would you describe that? Are you still in school too? Um, I actually recently graduated, like this past year. You know, class from what grade? Hmm? From what grade? And uh, how old are you right now too? Um. I don't give out my age, too. That's another thing. It's part of my, like, character's persona, but people could find it themselves, honestly. It's not that hard to find. I just prefer to not. I try to separate I my identity as an artist from, like, you know. Smart move. Smart move. A lot of fans these days, like, they like to uh, correlate the person's personality or their age or try to box them in versus really absorbing the art you know what i mean exactly. what you're definitely creating is and art some people are really weird <laughs> facts <laughs> so like how were your friends growing up like going to school how was like your interactions while you were at school um, let's see middle school i didn't really have a lot of friends like that um i got 
picked on a lot actually outside of sports which I was like getting pretty good at football but like outside of that I was just me and my bro Slate I remember one time we had to sit and eat lunch by the trash cans because no table like no table would let us sit with them no one wanted to like no one wanted to be around us I guess it was just tough experience and then going into high school I started getting new friends people from different places and stuff like that and it's kind of sad the way that people switched up whenever I started looking a different way started really I'm not gonna lie my first kind of blow up moment was my freshman year of high school and I noticed a dramatic shift in how people treated me and talked to me after that moment just odd but yeah I don't know high school was way better than middle school though I got a lot of different friends from a lot of different varying cultures and places so it's like felt way better is Slate still around are you guys still close oh yeah that's my brother shout out to Slate shout out to Slate for holding my man that abstract genesis down man and not switching (laughs) up no people reject what they don't understand you know what I mean and yeah, that's something I've always lived by is people will always reject and fear what they don't understand. It's like do, new concepts really throw people off, you know. Facts, you know, like even with the animation while we're reporting the news here, we get some rejection and some pushback for that, too. And comparisons like you had said earlier, like how people try to compare you to X. You're your own man. You know, what I mean, shout out to X. We did a tribute video out to him, too. But like, I can hear it. You got your own lane. You got your own style with it. You know what I'm saying? Now, like, how were you feeling during those times where like people were rejecting you? You had to sit by trash cans. Like, what was going? What was the mindset you were going through at that time? I don't know. My mindset was I wanted to be alone. I like was shut anyone who tried to reach out away from me because I was like, if I'm not gonna be popular. If I'm not going to be accepted, then fuck everybody else. I'm going to, like, you know, push myself into my own space. And there was really a time for reforming. In my head, I just felt like loneliness, to be honest. Maybe even sadness could be seen through that. And it's like, I only had one friend. I've obviously stated that. But it's like, with just me and him together, it was just like, fuck everyone else, basically. That's how I was feeling. Should I feel it? And you stay true to yourself. Now, we also got to get into the mindset of, like, when people switched up on you. You had brought that up earlier, too. What were you feeling during that time? Because that had to feel like a stab in the back, right? Well, honestly, in the beginning stages of it, I was still a little bit young and stupid. I was just like, oh, people want to be friends with me now? That's kind of cool. Like, I've always been wise beyond my years, but, like, socially, I was kind of blinded by, like, the influx of different stimulus, different environment, all that stuff. So at first I was like, okay. But then I realized the timeline of all this stuff. And I was like, all these people who used to talk down on me, treat me with no respect, want to come up to me, be buddy, buddy, and all that stuff. After this specific event, it was after I opened up for, I think, Maddox, Lil Tracy. It was a lot of people. Oh, shit, you opened up for Lil Tracy? Oh, yeah. Oh, we don't, we don't have good history, but I've opened up for him. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a lot of people don't have good history with him. Well, you wouldn't be the first. You're the first interview. I'm I'm very proud that we got this interview. This is an honor. Um, how long have you been doing music so far? Um, seriously, only about three years. But like, just doing it to do it, maybe six years, seven years. See, this is what the fans don't get to see, the grind and the perfecting of your craft. You know what I'm saying? This young man has put in the work, and it is showing. It is coming out through his music. And like I said, I could definitely see him on the front cover of a double XL freshman list soon. If if that's something he want to do, that's how much talent this young individual has. Now, what kind of like... what? What did you what do you label as like success? Like when your career does what I think is gonna do and it is gonna take off, what it, what do you view of success? Um, for me, success is gonna be whenever I can achieve my goal, which is to influence my peers, even people older than me, and especially the generation under me 
because a lot of young people are lacking guidance. Social media is filled with figures who won't steer them the right way. It's cool to be depressed now. It's cool to be a bad person now. It's cool to be toxic. And I want to change that with my career. So that's where my plateau will be. Once I get to a point where I can truly influence a large amount of people for the better. Once again, Chad, he's a real deal. He didn't say, oh, when I get the Maybach, oh, when I get the Rolls Royce, he's here for a purpose. Very genuine answer, very genuine answer. Red carpets and stuff like that, is that something you're looking forward to in the future? You see, I don't know if it's as much looking forward to, but I would appreciate it because it's it's like giving your roses to someone it's like giving your respect Facts. to someone seeing that opportunity unfold and it's like just because i have a goal of helping a lot of people it's obviously my main focus but that doesn't mean that i'm not going to be an artist i'm not going to dwell i'm only human <laughs> I'm not gonna right dwell. i'm not just gonna not enjoy the fruits of my labor as well Facts. now earlier you had mentioned that you even play instruments what kind of instruments do you play Let's see. I play Casio right there. I play keyboard, um, percussion. I did do orchestra for a little bit. Like hell yeah, you know, just strings. Um, brass. <laughs> I played tuba for a little bit. You fall on you know, Me too. Um, me too. <laughs> let's see. I've I've played a plethora of instruments, ranging from percussion to woodwind to strings. You know. Nice. I, I'm a saxophonist. That's that's what I went to uh, uh, college for, was to play saxophone, and that that affects how you hear music too. Like coming from like a, a instrumental bass, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. I could hear it because like you even change keys with your voice as you're making your music. That's what's up, man. Now, do you have like any local like Texas influences? Uh, that's a, I could really say my manager, but it doesn't really show through my music at Barum the One. Honestly, he's been a big, like, guiding figure for me in this music stuff, because he was basically in my position. All eyes were on him out oh, here in the music scene, oh, yeah. and he's basically just helping me do what he should have done at my age. He's guiding me the right ways, you know? Now, t- tell me more about your manager. How, how did you guys meet? Um, <laughs> it's a funny story that we recently just figured out. I met him for the first time um, at a show at this venue called Come and Take It or whatever. And basically, we were opening for Wi Fi's funeral. But Oh, you've been it. putting in work, work. <laughs> how did that hey, show go? That was whenever I was like 14. It was pretty good. It was like, eh, it was really at the peak of the SoundCloud era or like beginning, not the peak of the SoundCloud era. So like people were still getting used to hearing that like more distorted, aggressive sound. And like yeah. he rocked out. And for me, the person I was opening with kind of killed the energy for other people. It was up and downs during our set. But it's like, we didn't know that we met each other at that time. And then we like officially met about three or so years later at a, uh, house party that we got booked at (laughs) and we performed and him and his camp reached out to me and ever since then i've just been like locked in with them hell yeah now you said i think you said earlier that you also sung in choir too right um no i dance oh you dance dance. what did did you used to dance for like was there like an organization at school like what what did you used to dance for Mm, no i just I used to dance battle people. I used to like, you know, do stuff called animation. Um, I was about to, I was about to be on America's Got Talent, and then stuff fell through with that, and I was just like, eh, I like really didn't want to pursue it, you know. Yeah, I feel it. Like we all try certain things. We definitely see that like music is where, yeah, that like, yeah, <laughs> where where it's at for you, man. I'm mostly talented, shit. Um, what's the name of your new project? Actually, how many songs do you have out right now? Out right now, my discography is like maybe not counting features, maybe like 40 songs because that's two albums or two mixtapes. Sorry. 
um, one EP and then one SoundCloud exclusive EP. Where where could they find that? Where could they find mm-hmm. that? Uh, where can they find those EPs at? Um, those are on all platforms except for the one, which is a tribute EP to X, which is SoundCloud only. I felt like it was more true to him to do it that way. Hell yeah. That's what's up. What, are you working on any new current projects right now? Um, I have two projects and a lot of singles. I have way too much unreleased, but first project is an EP called um, Kinsey's Eden, which is all the lovey-dovey music I was bringing up earlier. It's going to show a different side of me, the more soft side, like singing and stuff like that. And then there is one rock song on there, though, obviously. Still got to be me. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then the next tape is anticipated by a lot of people. It's going to be first time releasing all of my punk, metal, screaming music, stuff like that. It's the second part to my first project. This is not rap music. It's two parts. The second part is called This is Euthanasia, which is going to be this is going to be a different different me. A lot of people will label it under my alter ego, Kill Gold, but it's still going to be released under me. Facts, facts, and for the people, name those two projects yet again. And when when are they going to be releasing again? Um, let's see. Kinsey's Eden is going to be releasing in two weeks from now. So I'm assuming I'm not really good with dates, like the 25th. Early. Okay. Okay. And this is Euthanasia will be dropping sometime late September, early October. Right if you ever need to use this platform to release your music, you can too. What is your YouTube channel you're going to be releasing it to, though? Um, for YouTube, I'm probably going to start my own. Finally. Yeah! I was going to mention it, but you're already on the right track, man. Once that visibility is, is there for you, it's, it's over. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited. What's the name of the YouTube channel going to be? Do you know yet? probably just my name because honestly abstract genesis is really an umbrella term to describe all of the different personalities and stuff in my music because like not every genre is abstract genesis so it's like it's a good umbrella term to post all my stuff under that's real Oh, my audio was muted the whole time. My bad. If you had to say anything to your fans right now, what would it be? Like, if, let's say if one of your fans was going through inner turmoil, let's say they were faced with the same thing you were faced with when you were feeling alone at school. What would you say to them? Okay, so speaking of fans, this is actually my specialty. Um, one, you are never alone. That's one thing that I'll always try to project to anyone who's a supporter of me a fan of me anyone honestly you are never alone the actions of society and other people do not define your happiness they do not define who you are literally in your head the image that you want to be you can be that no one's stopping you if anyone doesn't agree with it if no one wants to support you if no one wants to be there then you have yourself to lift you up you have your family to lift you up and even if they're not there you still always have yourself you are not alone there's always going to be some community that you will find and fit into. And even if you don't fit a normal cookie cutter mold, such as myself, there is always someone there to listen. And if you ever need to reach out, if anyone ever needs to reach out, I will always have my DMs open to supporters, to fans. I always have my group chats open. I will always offer a safe space for people to talk, feel accepted, and always let them know that my main thing is you're not alone. Because I always used to feel like that. and I would never let anyone feel like that again if it's up to me. Man, that's what's up. Actually, speaking of your fan, it appears you have like a cult fan base going on. Like they seriously rock with you. Immediately when I started to promo our interview on um, Instagram, one of the fans immediately said, "On I think it's on God Gen Cult or O N G Co- uh, Gen Cult on top." Oh, it's Gen Cult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. 
how'd that, that yeah. start? Basically, it started with the idea that I have this goal set in mind where I want to help and influence a lot of people. And I was thinking about that, and I was like, I have enough of a fan base to start now. Why not? So then I proposed this idea, not just for promo reasons and all that stuff, for me to actually be a genuine person, not just seen as an artist. I don't want to be that one artist who, as they get bigger, they just start to see their fans as just fans, their supporters as just fans, just like not having any type of contact with these people. And I'm like, it doesn't fit my theme to be that kind of person. So as I was thinking about it, I started making these group chats where I'm like, always started off with this is a safe space for you. You can always come to this group chat, this community where everyone should feel accepted and not alone. And from there, it's really just bloomed into this whole big thing where I'm just like, if anyone really needs help, if there's not someone in the group chat to help them and they can come to me, I just really proposed it as like a safe space and it came to fruition. Oh shit, I'm on mute. I'm on mute, my bad. Uh, for our, our safe spot, for our safe spot, for our chat is our Discord. That's where all the drama be going down, the fuckery. I think there's like a couple in there now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. There's, a, there's a Discord for Gen Colts, but it's like, I started using out. Discord, so it kind of fell through, but some people still go in there and talk if they need to and stuff. Shout it out. Do you do you remember uh, the name for the Discord? Well, let me check. <laughs> uh, hey, because I've not been in there in a while. Um, let's see, where is my Discord at? If you can't find out, uh, we after uh, we post this video up, I'll definitely <laughs> link it in the chat. You just link it, yeah. All right, for sure. But yeah, th this is a definite genuine individual i definitely want to follow him on his career guys that are his fans lend him your energy like goku powering up for the spirit bomb bruh because i think he got it i think he got it and he's not in it for the wrong reasons he's not in it for a chain he's not in it for a maybach he's not in it for the rolls royce he's in it to change the game to influence to help those who felt like him when he was faced with inner turmoil you know what i'm saying i wanted to make sure we painted a crystal clear picture of him in this time frame as he's going up in this industry all right is there anything else you want to say to your uh your fans and your supporters before we leave out with the creep freestyle um let's see what's something I never, I never wanted to take your time. Justice, but to all of my supporters and fans, I know y'all mean well, but whenever I post euthanasia or the end is near or something cryptic, it's promotion. That means music is coming. I've had to deal with this a lot. But besides that, I love all my supporters. I love all of my fans. And if you're watching this, if you ever need a person to listen, you need someone to talk to, advice, my DMs are always open. Big facts, big facts. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch upon before we leave with your clip of uh, Creep Freestyle that we did not get into? We got time today, brother. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I will be on the other Death Proof tour. I know some of my supporters saw that recently. I was on a tour with Death Proof with NASCAR. Shout out Oddly Shrug. Shout out Maserati or Maserat. Um, shout out the goth father you know shout out dirty shout out all my people out there in cali all the punks out there yeah i'm gonna be headed out hey. with them in the next couple of months gonna be trying to get on something with zillicami so with that and music a fan base we're about to eat that's what i'm gonna leave on Jeez, me and this mute button. I don't know. We we beefing right now. <laughs> but yeah, make sure you guys, his supporters, even my chat, make sure you guys lend him your energy, bruh. 
I'm serious. Put your hands in the air, bro. Because I really think he's going straight to the top. Very genuine dude. We're going to leave out with his creep freestyle. Once again, shout out your projects before we leave. For the last impressions. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on one second. Chat. Uh, and his uh, uh, fan base as well. ONG uh, Jen Colt. If you guys like this one-on-one, uh, -on -one, we can always do this as he's going up in his career. If there's questions you guys didn't get answered and you guys want more in-depth, shoot me in the questions. We could probably set something up as well. Or what were you saying, Amstrad? Well, I was just saying my next two projects are going to be Kinsey's Eden around June 27th, I mean July 27th, later this month like two weeks or so and then this is euthanasia anticipated angry screaming stuff more kill gold stuff for my fans for newer fans kill gold's my alter ego angry music you get you get the picture but yeah <laughs> that project will be coming out late september nice nice i'm looking forward to it and if you ever need me to use my platform and promo it too i'm always there i'll do it for my tiktok twitch youtube everything we are huge supporters over here. All right, now we're going to get into Abstract Genesis Creep Freestyle. That is my track. Chat, y'all already know. I mean, gaming out all week to it. <laughs> Headbanging it on stream and everything. Let's get into it, chat. We lit a what, chat? We lit a what? Yo, this has to be our anthem, chat. Straight up. The link for the full video will be in the description box below of that Creep Freestyle as well. All three links will be in the link below. And we'll re-update this video with the links of his new projects that are coming out as well. Abstract, it's been an honor, brother. Well, appreciate you for having me on here. And only way to go is up. Facts. Turn up. All right, chat, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, bang that notification bell. And in the description box below, you'll find a link to my Discord. And follow me on all my other socials. We're getting busy over there, too. Go.